네, 계속해서 그러면 두 번째 발표로 넘어가겠습니다. 어, 두 번째 발표는요. 어, 대릭 타민항 박사님께서 진행해 주실 건데요. 타민항 박사는 어, 아주대학교에서 국제개발협력 석사학위를 받고요. 명지대학교에서 환경정책을 주제로 공공행정학 박사를 취득 했습니다. 근데 제가 얘기 나눠 보니까 한국어를 전혀 거의 못 하시더라고요. 근데 어 이번에 기정훈 명지대학교 행정학과 교수님이랑 같이 오늘 발표를 준비해 주셨고요. 어 발표 제목은 스마트 에코 빌리지 4차 산업 혁명 시대의 새 마을 운동 전략입니다. 네, 발표 부탁드리겠습니다. 어 right. uh... Nice, nice to meet you all here. I'm very happy to be here uh, talking about the sustainability and the sustainable development like that in Africa. I'm so happy to be here and uh, it's a great pleasure to go on to the next topic for today. And so I'm going to be talking about the Smart Eco Village, uh, the Sema Ongdong uh, movement strategy in the era of the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, this is presented to the Smart and Eco Innovation of uh, Solution for African Sustainable uh, Development and uh, this uh, International Electric Vehicle Expo Africa session. So, um, all right. <laughs> so, uh, basically, I'm going to start with the concept of the Smart Eco Village and its key components, and then we're going to move on to components of the Sema Movement Pilot Village and then the Sema Eco Village strategy as a pilot project of the Sema Ongdong Movement. And then we're going to look at the cooperation potential benefits between Korea and the Africa's stakeholders. Then we're going to conclude with some suggestions. And so, so basically this is a diagrammatic representation of a U Eco City. And U Eco City simply is a Korean term that is used to uh, describe a smart city or a village, and it has like environmental friendly features. So it ensures sustainability and it is spread in all corners of the uh, city like that. And so basically uh, a smart eco village is a sustainable community that uses technology to uh, reduce the environmental impact while increasing the quality of life of the residents. And so, like, the main goals are to achieve environmental sustainability, social welfare, and economic uh, prosperity. And so, in terms of the environment, we are looking at energy efficiency. Like, now we want to look at sustainable energy, like the solar energy, the wind energy, geothermal energy, those are sustainable energy sources that we need to be using, that are renewable enough. And then uh, in terms of that, after that, we, in terms of the environmental goals, we are looking at environmental pollution reduction and then managing the resources like water and land properly. And then in terms of the welfare, we are looking at a uh, smart eco village should ensure like public safety, education, medical and health uh, uh, opportunities for the residents and also, also social st uh, stability. So we want to live in an environment that is healthy, harmonious and uh, also very safe like that. Like in Korea, when I came to Korea, Korea is so safe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I go to Seoul, I go to Myeongji University, keep my door open, it's so safe. I, I, I like it here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, for the smart eco village, uh, we want to like the proper in industry and the infrastructure has to be in place. Like the, the, the industry and the infrastructure has to manage the resources and ensure that there is efficient sustainability in the community. Like we are, we're looking at the smart utility, smart buildings, smart uh, transportation, and smart government as well. And in terms of the infrastructure, you're looking like the sensor network, data analysis, uh, smart load, and then telecommunication and web uh, services like that. And so, now we are talking about the concept of a smart eco village, but we have to draw inspiration from a smart city because a smart city can be a, a model for us to actually achieve our smart eco village. And uh, basically, a smart city is just a, 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 a city that is connected by a network using ICT based technology and various convergence technologies, uh, enabling information to be transferred between uh, we have. Uh, between people and people, and then people and objects, and then objects and objects, and also in, in between the cities. 
and which is spread all over. So it goes all across the city like that. And the main aims are to achieve sustainability, economic viability, and the improvement of the quality of life of the citizens like that. And so it's a typical framework. A typical framework to actually build a smart eco-village starts by the, the central and the local government. They, they come together, they, they, they seek the help of think tanks, and uh, NGOs, non research institutions, non profit organizations like that, even consultants to draft policies. So, when those policies are drafted, uh, then they will actually, the, uh, like the developers, construction companies, designers will actually come together to put in the infrastructure of such utilities. And at that point, not only the government will be involved in the running of the Smart Eco Village, but also like the stakeholders who have to come in to have their various rules to play like that. And then we are talking about the fourth industrial revolution, like Smart Eco Village in the fourth industrial revolution. Why is it so? Because like uh, fourth industrial revolution simply is the current era that we are living in, in which there is technological advancement. A lot of technological advancement, like we have the AI, artificial, in, uh, artificial intelligence, we have the robotics, internet of things, 3D printers, those are like the fourth industrial revolution uh, technologies that are uh, in place right now. So like the, the, the digital world and the, the physical world, the digital world and the biological world are in, increasingly being connected by the food uh, industrial revolution uh, technologies like that. And this is helping to, uh, we, we can achieve productivity, efficiency, and connectivity through all these technologies. And uh, so why now the smart eco village in terms of the food industrial revolution? Like the smart eco village in terms of, it's just a manifestation of the food industrial revolution based on the context, on the context of uh, sustainable development. So like sustainability is at its core. So a smart eco village leverages the, uh, the, 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 the power of technological advancement to actually achieve an, econ uh, 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 an environmental friendly, socially responsible, and an economic viable community with the power of technology. And such technologies include like, we have the smart grid systems, which will eventually manage the resources where, and then renewable sources of energy can be in integrated, like the solar energy, the wind energy, that are sustainable enough. And then uh, we, we, uh, we are also looking at the internet of things like sensors that can monitor like the water level, air, air quality. Like in Korea, there is the misemanji, like the air quality, yeah, such technologies like the sensors can monitor the air quality and which is actually being used in Korea like that uh, which is great and then also we talk, we're looking at the electric and autonomous vehicles uh, like why we in, in, in the international electric vehicle export today those are the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution that are put in place right now and the smart eco village wants to incorporate this into action and uh, to achieve sustainability and also we are looking at sustainable buildings, also waste manage management like anaerobic digestion and combusting like that. Those are the, uh, the uh, kind of examples of the fourth industrial revolution technologies like that. And then uh, we are looking at now the concept of a smart eco village. So basically it's, it's, it's a village community in which the, like it's connected. It's connected by, a, oh my God. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so it's, it, all the corners of the village is connected by a network through ICT-based technologies and a various convergent technology alliance in which like, there is mutual information exchange between uh, people and people and then people and things and then things and things and also between uh, the villages like that when they come into cooperation. So the main aim is to achieve sustainability and economic viability and also improvement of the quality of life of the uh, village residents like that. And uh, the reform of consciousness of village residents and the expansion of technology like the accessibility, technological accessibility uh, has become a very important issue. Like you have to be conscious, you have to tell them like, oh, you don't use this type of thing because it's gonna cause some problems to the environment. Please don't use the plastic. So that consciousness has to be there. And then, uh, then 
why is it so different, like the Smart Eco Village is different from other sustainable uh, projects like the Smart City, is because like the appropriate technology has to be put in place. Like, the different, different cities, different villages, they have their different uh, uh, environment, uh, like developmental plans. Like, you, you, you want like transport, you want better, uh, communication, so it just depends on what you need. So like the, the technology has to be appropriate like that. And then uh, the elements of education and training should be emphasized because like a lot of inform a lot of new technologies are being developed and in the fourth industrial revolution. So we have to educate the people and we have to train them so that they have the skills to actually operate these technologies. And then uh, it is also important to introduce education and the technological elements that are tailored to the characteristics of a village, like the culture. We should bring technology that is in line with the culture of the people, like that. And uh, yeah, so basically to. Establish, establishment of a smart eco village be, begins with the central and the local government that seek the help of support agencies. So the, the, the support agencies will come now to draft policies. And when those policies are drafted, uh, with the help of NGOs and research institutions as well, and then uh, like construction companies uh, and also support agencies companies that are working with the support agencies to come in to actually build the infrastructure that is needed with the help of the local residents to build such infrastructures like that. And at, at such points, the stakeholders will also have to come in place to take the various rules in the smart eco village. And now, uh, we are talking about the key components of the smart eco village. The first, we are looking at expanding citizens' participation using ICT based technology, like that, like introducing education and information communication accessibility to, to the people, and then uh, also intro introduction of technology that fits the culture of the people. Like in Africa, a lot of different culture, cultural background. Like in Cameroon, we have a lot of different, like 300 and something villages with different culture. So, how can you bring this technology that will be in line with a, with the culture of the people, like different cultures together? Like you have the Muslim culture, Christian culture. Like usually, like in the in, in the Muslim, they can use their mat to to pray, but those mats sometimes are made of non biodegradable material. So, like if we can bring technology that can help to bring the the mat into a about uh, degradable form, then that would be actually good. So like, this is actually bringing technology that is in line with the culture of the people, like that. And so uh, also introducing e-government is also very important, like that, because in Africa, e-government needs to be there, a lot of corruption, not accountable, uh, accountability, no transparency in the government sector. So e-government, e-government is going to do, a, 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 it's going to go a long way to change and to solve these problems in Africa. And I also, uh, in, uh, the key, other key component is improving the physical environment, which is like the water supply, the food supply needs to be improved, and then also improving housing and hygiene, and then uh, also education and health services like uh, telemedicine, you know, uh, online, online schools, online education needs to be put in place, like that. And also, uh, and then we are looking at income generation, income generation and regional development. Income generation, we, we, are, we, we want to develop a, a, a value chain in the agricultural sector and also encourage like startups and marketization strategy, like online sales, you know, you, blockchains, online shopping, those are the technologies that I have to put in place that are sustainable enough in the African uh, community. And, and now, the Sema Ongdong Movement Pilot Village, they have their components. And uh, Sema Ongdong has been doing a great job for uh, rich, uh, royal sustainable development in Korea and also in other parts of the world. Like, I'm so surprised. Sema Ongdong was just 20, 2017 with this project and they are doing a great job in terms of royal sustainable development worldwide. And, the strategy, they, they have these components in, and embodies the strategy from bottom to up, and uh, the citizen has to come together, cooperation, and then capacity building is so important, like education and training, uh, leadership, and then in terms of like environment, you have to look at the environmental purification, electric, electricity, telecommunication, which has the output, and also uh, production increase using technology. And this is going to go a long way to improve the environment 
income growth will be there, mindset of innovation will be there, and the overall growth is quality of life of the people will be improved with such a project. And uh, the implementation process of the Sema Ongda movement, it first starts with the appropriate program, appropriate program according to the developmental priorities. Like the, the village or the cities, they have the developmental priorities. Maybe so needs transport, or maybe Swan needs bird communication. So it's different from, from there. So the Sema Ongdong has to look into the appropriate program that they need to uh, do, uh, perform in the, in the village like that. And then also it is demand based on the governments and the residents. So like the, the village residents and the government, they actually, they, they know what they need. They know, they, 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 they can table their needs, like we need this, we need a good road. We need a smart uh, a transport network. We need electric vehicles. So it is based on the demands of the local residents. And then also sh strengthening the capacity of officials for related organization and local residents. Capacity building is very important. You have to train them, educate them, so that they have the skills and the knowledge in order to uh, build a sustainable community. And then also encouraging uh, participation of local residents. We are talking about cooperation. People have to come together and inclusive development in order to achieve their goals. And then the action plans to be step, to, uh, step by step. We we'll have the implement, implement, uh, objective, the timeline, and then the implementation has to be step by step like that. And also like dissemination of the achievement through a post-mortem regional reflect, uh, policy reflection. Like you sit down, look at what has been said, look at what has been done, is it good? Can we do it more? Where do we have to improve? So this is the post-regional policy reflection. And then based on the capacity of the village, of the smart eco village, uh, factors such as social capital and the government, governance have to come in place. Social capital is just basically needs to improve cooperation and then governance will have in the to like a, a proper organization of the project through leadership, then action, decision making, and uh, also like the production process like that. And so this is actually a strategy, the strategy of the Sema Ongdong to uh, promote smart eco villages. So you can see that the components of the smart eco village are found in the Sema Ongdong movement pilot village. So they have the strategy, and then they have the key components of the smart eco village. So basically, you have income increase, it's going to, in, in, uh, it's going to cause income generation and regional development. Meanwhile, improvement of living, uh, living environment is going to improve the environment, and then revolution of consciousness is going to have an impact on expanding, uh, expanding citizen participation through ICT-based uh, technology, and then also education as well, and then income generation as well. So it's a lot of these things. I think there's no time, but I have to just rush. But I think like capacity building is very important because it's going to affect all the key components of the smart eco-village. So be it uh, participation with technology, environmental improvement, and then education and health services as well, and then also income generation like that. So capacity building goes across all the uh, components of the Smart Eco Village. And so this is the strategy of the Smart Ongdong to actually promote a uh, uh, Smart Eco Village like that. Now, we are looking at the cooperation. Cooperation benefits between Korea and uh, Africa. So in terms of the cooperation, I think there's transfer of technological knowledge. Korea has advanced technology and they, are, like, they have the expertise when it comes to sustainable development. So African governments can now tap into it. Like they, they can copy and try to gain from Korea, expo uh, uh, from, yeah, from the Korean uh, knowledge like that. So transfer of knowledge is also one of, is one of the benefits. And then sustainable development is one of the benefits that uh, it's gonna take place. Like the smart eco village strategy can be adapted to suit the needs of the context of the African uh, countries, promoting sustainable development and royal, uh, uh, sustainable and royal development. And then also like there'll be job creation, job creation in the, in the, in the agricultural sector, in the energy and in the tourism sector like that. And then also one of the benefits of the cooperation will be climate change mitigation, like fight against climate change. Carbon dioxide emission to the, to, uh, will be reduced by the smart eco-village strategy. And then 
corruption. This is the this is the very important issue in in in, in, in the Africa, also in my country, Cameroon. Corruption and lack of transparency is deep rooted in African uh, countries. So, like e-government is going to go a long way to create more efficient, effective, and accountable government institutions uh, in the African uh, society like that, contributing to sustainable development, economic growth, and improvement in the quality of life of the citizens. And then also the last uh, cooperation benefits, we have social equity. There's a lot of inequality in uh, Africa. A lot of rich people, a lot of poor people, people not getting this, so a lot of inequality. So, Promoting community involvement, social equity, smart eco-villages will promote what? There's that inclusive development. People come together. It's going to eliminate the aspect of inequality and promote social equity like that. And uh, so basically, so let's I'll just wrap up with a conclusion here. So basically, a smart eco-village can be achieved uh, through a differentiation in scale and scope from a concept of a smart city. And the concept of rural development and education should be uh, uh, introduced. The main aims are to achieve sustainability, uh, economic uh, viability, and the improvement of the quality of life of the residents. And uh, yeah, the reform of consciousness of village residents and the expansion of technological accessibility has become a, a very important issue. So different di differentiation of smart eco village will be based on the appropriate technology has to be put in place and then uh, the elements of education and tr uh, training should be emphasized like we have to educate people we have to train them enough in, and then to have that capacity and then uh, also the imp importance of introducing technology based on the culture culture of the people is it the christian community muslim community like the culture has to be matters a, a lot when it comes to like uh, implementing this. And then the elements of a smart eco village basically improve like expansion of citizen participation using technology and then uh, physical environmental uh, environment improvement, uh, education and health services also they have to be put in place, income generation and uh, regional development like that. And then Notice that the components of a smart ongoing movement are also incorporated in the smart eco village. So it's a very good project like that. And uh, uh, cooperation, poten uh, cooperation benefits with Africa. There will be technological knowledge transfer. And then there is going to be sustainable development. There's going to be job creation, climate change mitigation, and the fight against corruption and above all social equity. Social equity and. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad to present here, and I, I think it's a great project. Uh, let's, let's achieve develop, development that is sustainable for all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 네, 감사합니다. 네, 이제.